it's a much more complex environment that we live in today. Um, there's a wider spectrum of threats, and um, whether the threats are internal, external, uh, asymmetrical, um, they require a, a more flexible combination of resources that the state security agencies, both uh, internal agencies and external agencies can provide. So there's a much greater overlap in what we do. Um, so we have restructured the SAF and part of the restructuring of the third generation SAF is to enable it to deal with this wider spectrum of capabilities. So you can see that uh, the SAF has to be ready to deal with um, um, uh, support for our home team security agencies in Singapore, protection of installations, um, security during high key events, and so on. And also to augment them in an emergency in Singapore. Uh, at the same time, we have to continue to be ready for threats which are external to Singapore. And these can range from things like um, piracy, mari other maritime incidents at sea, <coughs> um, peacekeeping uh, and uh, uh, more active uh, operations like uh, in the Gulf of Aden and also uh, in Afghanistan. So these are the whole spectrum of things which the SAF has to be able to participate in and operate in. Now, what a capable SAF provides us is this. The Security environment in our region is changing, and the world is changing. And what it will look like in future is still in the process of making. Um, so if you have been following the things like the Shangri-La Dialogue, the discussions there, we're talking about regional security architecture, uh, if you've been following the ASEAN uh, network, we've recently, um, among the ASEAN Defence Ministers meeting, uh, moved forward on the ASEAN Defence Ministers meeting plus eight. And there are various other kinds of activities going on, uh, exercises uh, and so on, among armed forces. Having a capable SAF allows us to be a useful and significant partner in all these activities. Because we can bring something to the table, we can contribute something, to the security environment uh, to facilitate interaction between uh, uh, different countries and armed forces and to help to bring them together so that that peaceful, cooperative security environment that we want to see can develop. So if we, uh, you know, because we have things like the um, Information Fusion Center at uh, Changi, and the Changi Command and Control Centre. Uh, we are able to bring together uh, liaison officers from seven countries to work together on maritime security issues. And it's only because we have a Navy that is capable that we're able to move forward on an initiative like that. Um, uh, in other instances as well, uh, we have been able to play a facilitative role in getting people together to interact with each other exercise with each other or have meetings together um, and I think with these interactions, meetings uh, we will build greater confidence among people, develop the habits of cooperation and um, then we will be able to uh, work together rather than uh, have differences and conflicts with each other uh, so that is basically the what a capable SAF provides us in this very uncertain security environment. It helps us to be a player. It helps us to shape the environment. Otherwise, what will happen is we will just be a bystander. And the environment around us will be shaped and determined by other people. And we will have limited influence in being able to determine what shape and outcome that will have.